Hey guys, Jacqueline here and welcome to part 7 of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. In this video we'll be adding collectible items that the player can pick up by running into them. We will begin by importing our collectible sprite. In your sprites folder, right click and select import new asset. Then navigate to where your asset is saved. I'm going to be grabbing a sprite sheet that includes the sprite that I want to use. Once the assets are imported into Unity, let's set up their settings. In the inspector, set the sprite mode to multiple since we're using a sprite sheet, then set the pixels per unit to 32. Next, set the filter mode to point and the compression mode to none. Then apply your settings and open the sprite editor. With the sprite editor open, let's slice our sprites. Click on the slice button and set the mode to grid by cell size. Then set the cell size to 16 by 16 and slice the sprites. Double check that everything is sliced correctly and hit apply. Once your changes are applied, close the sprite editor. Great, now we can add our sprite to our scene. Click and drag the sprite you're using into your scene. In order for the player to pick this up, we're going to need to know when they walk into it. So let's add a box collider 2D to the sprite. The sizing's a bit off, so let's edit the collider's bounds. Click the edit collider button and drag the collider to the correct size. Now, if we play, you can see that the player can't walk into the seed pack. They get stopped as they collide with the sprite. What we want instead is for our player to be able to enter the sprite as a trigger. So let's make the box collider 2D a trigger. To do so, check the is trigger checkbox on the 2D collider. Great, now when you play, your player can walk over the sprite. This is going to give us the effect that we want. Now we can make our collectible item work. In the scripts folder, let's create a new C-sharp script called collectible. Then let's add the collectible script to our sprite in our scene. Now let's open the script. With the script open, delete the start and update functions. We won't be using these. Let's think about what we want to happen. First, the player needs to walk into the collectible item to pick it up. Then, we need to add the collectible to the player. And finally, we can remove the collectible from the scene. So the first challenge is to detect when the player walks into the trigger box. There's a built-in function to Unity that lets us detect when something has entered a trigger. The function is called onTriggerEnter2D, and it takes parameter of a collider 2D. When something walks into the trigger, and that something has a collider, it will call this function. So we can detect if something has entered our collider, but we really only care if the player has entered our collider. So we need a way of checking if the collider that entered the trigger belongs to our player. Currently, we don't have any way of checking this, so let's make one. Head back to Unity and create a new c -sharp script in your scripts folder. Name this script player, and then double click it to open it. Once it's open, delete the start and update function. Then, save the script and head back to your collectible script. We're going to be putting our player script on our player. So this gives us a way to see if the game object that has entered the trigger is the player. To check this, let's create a local variable of type player and let's call it player. Then, let's set that equal to collision.getComponent player. This line of code is going to attempt to get the player script off the game object that's entered the trigger. If the game object has a player component, then it will get it and set it. But if the game object doesn't have a player component, then the player variable will be set to null. Now we have a way to check if the player walked into the collectible. We can do so by checking if the player variable is not equal to null. If it isn't, then we know that the player is inside the trigger. Once we know this, we can add the collectible to the player. So let's save the script and go back to the player script. Let's add a way of keeping track of how many collectible objects we've picked up. I'm going to create a public integer called num carrot seeds and I'm going to set this to zero by default. Great, let's save the script and head back to our collectible script. If your player variable isn't null, then let's add to the number of carrot seeds that we've picked up. We can access this through the player variable. We can say player.numCarrotSeeds++. Plus plus. This just adds one to the current value of the number of carrot seeds in our player script. Next, we need to remove the collectible object from the world. To do this, we will need to destroy it. The destroy function is also a built-in Unity function, and it takes a parameter. The function wants you to pass in which object you'd like to destroy. So, in our case, we want to destroy the collectible game object. So let's pass in this dot game object. Great, now we'll save the script and head back to Unity. Before we can test it out, we need to add the player script to the player. Click on the player game object and drag the player script onto it. With the player selected, you should be able to see the num carrot seeds variable in the inspector. Now let's test it out. Hit play and collect the collectible. The collectible should disappear from the scene and the num carrot seeds 
should have changed from zero to one in the inspector. We've successfully created a collectible object. In the next video, we will start our inventory system so that we can add our collectibles to our inventory. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot and I will see you next time.